agriculture and manufacturing. Presently, extractives have been highlighted in the third National Development Plan as strategic economic drivers of growth and are part of the thematic areas under the Presidential Investors Roundtable 6. As the emergency of the state became a uniting factor, formalization of trade and skills grew, private sector started to bond and a voice was needed to support and advocate for the industrial stakeholders. This resulted in the formation of the Uganda Chamber of Mines in 2000 that later rebranded in March 2010 to Uganda Chamber of Mines and Petroleum, UCMP, launched by His Excellency President Museveni and His Excellency Jacob Zuma of South Africa at a colorful ceremony in Kampala. UCMP is a non-for-profit voluntary organization that coordinates, promotes, advocates and facilitates information and administrative support to its members for a beneficial extractives industry. With the goal of promoting, protecting, and advocating for beneficial development of energy and numerous industry in the country, Uganda Chamber of Mines and Petroleum has over the last 10 years influenced policy and advocated for beneficial business environment for chamber members, networking, creating synergies, and partnerships that benefit members. It has also been a go-to resource center for information on the extractives industry, building member capacity and enhance their competitiveness in the industry. In pursuit of its advocacy and lobbying role with government and other stakeholders, the Uganda Chamber of Mines and Petroleum does not stop there. In time, it has put up various conventions, workshops, training, and special programs like the ongoing recognition of prior learning, RPL, funded by the World Bank under Skills Development Facility, where the Chamber has partnered with its members to certify workers in the trades of welding, pipe fitting, electrical, and scaffolding with international certification, ECITB Level 2. This support focuses only on the skills that are demanded by the productive oil and gas industry, construction sector and recognized by the Ministry of Education and certification done by only reputable national and international certifying bodies. Uganda Chamber of Mines and Petroleum always remains focused on the future of Uganda's oil and minerals subsectors and their development as it remains true to its mission to facilitate, through collective action of members, the development of competitive and robust energy and minerals industry. At Uganda Chamber of Mines and Petroleum, there is always room for more members because together we can always achieve more. Sport is back. Stay connected to DSTV to watch it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yet again, it's another exciting day, and I'm um, quite honored again and pleased to be alive to bring to you more sports. Uh, it's another week. It's been uh, really, you know, a full week of so much going on 
in the world of sport uh, from the international scene where the major leagues returned uh, Paris Saint-Germain beaten by newcomers Lens who are newly promoted in their opening game of the season whereas Arsenal the Gunners obliterated the crossroads rivals Fulham 3-0 in their opening game of the season also the first game uh, in the, uh, the English Premier League season that began the 2020 2021 season all courtesy of DSTV that action was live and in much HD and of course all the other games that uh, were held over the weekend welcome aboard good evening ladies and gentlemen once again boys and girls call your friends frenemies in-laws and outlaws and tell them it is time for NBS the score my name is Webb Daniel Sabadji now on the show tonight I told you a lot happened all throughout the week in the world of sport but at home here I think uh, besides the Mandela National Stadium, you know, electing a new board, which also includes one of our own, a former journalist and new super president, Mark Namanya, uh, probably the bigger news in the world of sport for anyone who loves Uganda was the win in Czech Republic of the youngster, just 19 years of age, but Jacob Kiplimo is indeed a star when it comes to long, dis uh, long distance. And now that is uh, the background of our topic of discussion tonight, and we are asking you, how good, we are trying to find out how good is this young man, Jacob Kiplimo. We've had people close to him compare him to Joshua Cheptegei, who to me is up there with the likes of Usain Bolt and the greats of all time, really. Uh, so we're just here to understand how good this boy can be. And that is why we have two special guests on the show. As they say, ladies first, uh, far away from me, is a lady, a sprinter. If you do love Ugandan athletes, you've probably heard of the name. Mildred Gamba, uh, she's a sprinter and also a club founder. Good to have you, Mildred, on the show. Thank you. Also, most importantly, today you're here as a coach uh, because you're an athletics coach. Yes. You're welcome to the Thank show. Thank you. Thank you. For you should me. be the third or second lady to be on this show. Oh, <laughs> that means then you need to invite more ladies on the show. Yeah, because if your show is running weekly and I'm the th only the third lady, yeah, that's not very we good. do, but most ladies in sport chicken out of, 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 of these shows. I don't know why, but so I should commend you for t being so bold to represent the ladies. But uh, welcome once again to the show. And uh, of course, close to me is uh, the national team long distance coach. That is Mr. G Gordon Ahimbisiwe. Good to have you, Mr. Gordon. I'm very happy to be here with you. Mm. Thank you for investing, inviting me for the first time here. Yeah? Mm. I appreciate it. Let's talk athletics. Now, first of all, Uganda has come a long way, and I'll start with you, uh, uh, Mildred. Uganda has come a long way in athletics from being uh, probably a laughing, you know, uh, the, laugh, the, the, the distlot, if I would call it that, the laughing stock for everyone, to being on the global stage year in, year out lately. It's becoming a habit that will produce global stars. Tell us the story of how far you've come. You're an athlete. Correction. Athletics has always been the golden sport of Uganda. It has never been a laughing stock. Really? We, we had a world record from John Akibwa. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We had people like Justin Arop. We have people like Kipsiro. We have people like... Uh, oh, 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 so okay, maybe if, to put if, it in if comparison. We talk history, if you look at Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games, the two sports in Uganda that have won medals at oh, each of those events oh, oh. are... <laughs> Athletics and boxing. and boxing. Now, maybe... Okay, we compare to Ethiopia maybe, and Kenya. No, no, we are talking of Uganda. Okay, okay. If we say it is a laughing stock, the reason maybe it is a laughing stock is because athletics has not been given the popularity mm. and the respect it deserves. Year in, year out, the only time they remember athletics is when we, we win, win a medal. medal. Yeah. Then they're like, oh, our sport. But after that, you go to the sidelines because I have an experience where we've organized an, a race and we are trying to get sponsors and no one wants to sponsor you okay yeah. because they think athletics is not popular but when we go out and win that's when they remember so no we have never been a laughing stock we have not been appreciated enough okay wow well, I like uh, you know losing confidence uh, defending athletics and I agree we are no longer uh, that uh, but uh, we are indeed uh, one of of course the countries that are growing in the sport on the continent coach uh, in Bisiba, you've been a coach of athletics for long. Maybe just talk about you for a bit. Uh, have you been an athlete yourself before? Did you run at what level and how did you get into coaching? Yeah. More so, the national team. Uh, I was a, I started running when I was, so I was still very young. Mm. And uh, when I started running at national level, I was a middle distance runner. I was running 1,500 meters. But in long and middle distance, you can you keep on climbing, climbing. Mm. I ended up being a marathon champion. Mm. I ran so many marathons, half marathons. 
up to 1998, that's when I retired from active running. Mm. I went for coaching course. <coughs> but even before I went for the course, I was a coach athlete. Mm. Because when you remember in the early 90s, mm. when the schools were still performing very well, we mm. had, I was coaching Bombo, mm -hmm. Bombo Senior Secondary School. Mm. That's the time we got like those of Toratich Martin, mm. we had like Joffrey, Godfrey Nyombi, he's another businessman. Mm. That's when I started coaching, but I was coach athlete. Mm. Then after retiring, I came for a coach that was in 2000 after qualifying oh. as a coach. And when did you start uh, coaching the national team, uh, long distance team to be, to be specific? Yeah. The national, oh, from 2000? Yeah, that, that you, are, you handle long distance. That's your, your expertise. Yeah, I'm specializing in middle and long distance. Middle and long distances. Yes. Well, amazing. Now, uh, we will get into the details of you know, middle and long distances and what you need an, as an athlete to perform in either. Uh, but let's talk about you know, the times now. The topic tonight on the show, uh, we are talking to people who are big in sport. Joshua Chipri Cheptege, I said it here in my intro that I, I, I placed him up so high with the likes of Usain Bolt, the likes of uh, the greats in, in sport in the world, Michael Phelps. And uh, some people look at me and I'm like, well, no, that is being too excited about this boy. But I'm thinking at 23, if he's doing the things he's doing, he's up there with the rest. How, how good is Joshua Chipri Cheptege, Mildred? Um, Joshua, Joshua is definitely a world-class athlete. And they, when, when you compare them to the greats, it's mm. not a bad comparison. Because if you look at him, he's achieved almost everything. The only thing that he's left to achieve is the Olympic gold. Mm. He's, he started with the world junior, 10,000 meter. Okay? Mm. He came to the, uh, to, 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 the, to the World University Games. Mm. He's won that. He's a double Commonwealth champion. He's won the World Championships. He's won the World Cross Country. He's a three-time world record holder. Actually, he would be a four-time, except the 15 kilometer is no longer recognized. Yeah. So definitely, that is not a mean feat to achieve. He is among the best of the best. I was, I was one of those who were arguing, you know, when Eliud Kipchoge was named the best uh, athlete last year, I think. I was like, how? Let me ask you as an athlete, and maybe let me put this to the coach. You know the, 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 the record uh, Eliud Kipchoge uh, uh, broke last year. Uh, how, how big a deal is it? Would you say it's bigger than the achievements that Joshua Chip, uh, uh, Cheptege made that same year? Do you think he was a deserved winner of that award of the best athlete in the world in 2019? Yeah, you see, for us in athletics, in most cases, mm. There's no corruption. Mm. I see it when the committee sat, they looked at chapter again, they looked at uh, Chip Chong. Mm. They, they saw he was deserving being the, elected as the, the champion. In your view as a coach, yes. this guy, you know, broke the record uh, with uh, all this technology that was given to him. So many pace setters. It didn't come off as natural, really. Yet, Joshua Cheptegei was winning things the same year on a, a leveled ground, if I would call it that. That, is, that for me did not come, and I'm not an athlete, uh, neither am I an expert, but I just needed an expert, an expert opinion on this. Does, did the environment through which Eliud Chiptuge, you know, make you know, his record, perhaps make it easier for him? I actually told someone if uh, Chiptuge was given such conditions, he would probably learn, uh, run half the, the time Eliud Chiptuge read. I get, I get, <laughs> I get what you're saying, because when you look at the time, Chepchoge Ren, mm. he was not, he's not easy. Mm. There was a lot of assistance, because mm. how you know, with those so many uh, pesetas, mm. but mm. if it was to be on my side, technically, to mm. be the normal running yeah. marathon, yes. it was not easy. Mm. There was a lot of assisting. Yeah, the shoes, then the yeah. rays are here, what yeah, rays, whatever. There was a lot of assisting. Uh, the actual sense, when you look at uh, even Chepchoge that year, mm. He deserved because for him he ran the real race. But yeah. then there was a lot of assisting mm. technically. Mm. Chapter Gay was, was deserving <laughs> it. I hope I, I did not corrupt you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope I did not Do you agree? Well, I think they're both deserving to win. Yeah. Because if you look at the vote, the way it was carried out, mm. um, there, was, there, were, there were fans who voted as well. Yeah. And then there was the technical committee. Yeah. So each of those votes counted. Mm. And when you followed on Twitter, mm. um, Elude was mm. winning by far mm. from the fans' perspective. Mm. Of course, definitely there was a lot of talk like, 
mm. you know the, the rates, there was assistance, there was this. But he has run close to, to less than, uh, to, to below two, two, two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. In a normal circumstance. Mm. True, he had assistance, but there was no wind pushing him. He no technology. Yes, but like he physically, mm. his body had mm. to go through that. Mm. Okay? Mm. There was no way technology was helping him. For mm. the, running for one hour consistently is not a joke. I mean, mm. like I warm up for, uh, tr for the track and I do like two laps and I wonder how they manage to do 25 mm. uh, laps or they're doing like two hours. We need to sometimes respect certain so, things. Mm. Yes, technology came in. But what, and the whole reason why it is not recognized as a world oh, record, record yeah. is because they were trying something out. Mm. This was not the first time. They tried it before, but ah. it didn't work. So it should take nothing away from his It way. should take nothing away from his. Because he had, if he had woken, if he had gone and slept, then mm -hmm. come and run that, mm. true. But he went and put in time to train. So we shouldn't take away okay. his achievement. One of his so many first setters was our own, the, the, the subject of our discussion tonight, Jacob Kiplimo. Mm. He was, uh, I think, just returning from injury, and everyone was expecting him to go for the big, you know, uh, competitions, you know, aim for world titles and all. But he chose to, and probably his uh, managers advised him to, to, to go for that, you know, a, a pace setting and not come and go. But let's talk about Jacob Iplimo. We spoke about Joshua Cheptegei, whom to, uh, I think, for me, from where I sit, is the best uh, long distance runner this country has had. Uh, even, even if he's still active. Uh, but uh, for Kiplimo to be mentioned in the same sentence as Joshua Cheptegei, to a person watching out there, they will be thinking, what is it about this boy? Is it because he won the uh, Golden Spike in Czech Republic? Tell me about Jacob Kiplimo. How, when did you first saw, uh, see him, and how, how, how gifted is this young boy? I think I'd, I'd, I'd uh, think coach, then, coach, coach go first. Coach then go first. I'll supplement on that. Go, coach go first because <laughs> you're the coach. And um, first of all, how, how 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 long have you you know worked with both oh. Cheptegei and Kiplimo, and what do you see in them that makes them special athletes? Uh, let me start with Cheptegei. Mm. He's one of our best young athletes because Cheptegei was identified in 2015. Mm. That's when we had a mountain race in the Kapchorwa. That's when he was identified for the first time. Mm. He just came from nowhere. He won the race, and after winning that race, now we came in as technical people and the foundation at large mm. to support the boy. Mm. The boy is naturally talented. Mm. The boy is good. Mm. Uh, and uh, when I told like last year when he missed World Championship, because mm. I was the one to train the national team, mm. he touched me. Mm. But technically, for him, he wanted to go because yeah. he was, was feeling a bit fair. Mm. But I had to come in, I had to talk to the my boss, mm. General Secretary, Madame Beatrice, we agreed with the moving the stem. But uh, later, was put in the team to go and the set for mm. the Chipchonga. Mm. That one, it was beyond me, I could not yeah, come in. Of course. Because, mm. you know, this it is business. Yeah, true. There was a good, some good money, but if I had powers, he wouldn't have gone mm. for, for that. Is, because of managing the injury or? Yeah, it was still yeah. nursing the injury. Yeah. But for him, he said it was already okay. Mm. Then when we go to Joshua Chapter again, uh, he's a bit senior. Yeah, so yeah. He's a bit senior, he's senior to, to uh, Chiplimo. Because mm. when you look at his background, he started running when he was still mm. in secondary. And, but he came to excel mm. by the time he joined the university, the Gamma University. Mm. That's when he excelled. And that's when he won for us the first gold medal in the world oh, junior. Yes. That was his beginning. Mm, mm. And from that time, he has never gone back. Let, let, let's go back to Kiplimo. You say he's uh, very naturally talented. In other sports, like football, say, you can look at Ronaldinho, who is my best footballer of all time, and you see he's a special player. What he does with that ball is different from what a player like, say, uh, you know, uh, 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 Hassan Waswa or, you know, uh, whoever, Cristiano Ronaldo, whoever does with the ball. In athletics, what do you see in a special talent besides the running? Because it's, it's just running. It's not like they're playing with a, <laughs> with a ball and, you know, someone has more tricks. What do you see in a young, good uh, athlete? Uh, yeah, well, uh, what I would say, mm. you may find you have two athletes. Mm. There is that one who works hard to make mm. sure he can achieve. 
But did somebody who can be even trained within one month and you can achieve to... things naturally? Yeah, that's mm. what that's what I mean. But uh, Chief Remo is mm. naturally talented. Mm. When you compare to other athletes, mm. because the way he came mm. for the first time in Iran, we saw him. That's when we came to know that he's talented. Mm. Uh, you might find somebody also is talented, but they are not the same. Mm. But when you look at uh, like Joshua Chiptege. Mm. Is different from Chiprimo. Mm. Because when you look at it, you will find Chiprimo might be more talented than one. But Joshua Chapter Gay is a hard working man. That is number one. Number two, he's a very good mathematician. The, the, is that, is mathematics in, in, yeah. in athletics? Is science. Yes. Science. How? Tell me about it. How? It's Actually, just a, Okay, maybe to supplement on what yeah. Coach Gordon is saying. See, mm. you said, how can you tell a natural talented runner? In running, the things we look at, one is we look at your body posture, okay? Mm. Like, because the long distance runners will find that the body posture has to be straight. And two, you look at the leg movement. There's a way the leg has to be moving. And then three, you look, look at the arm movement. Now, there are people who you will have to teach that. Like, when they come to run, you can be like, mm. okay, you're running like this. Mm. And, so you, you have know, to keep some your of them hands are running, within this, a certain... This one is coming and is running. Naturally, you know, without being naturally. told. They've never been told. They've mm. never had any... Now, that one is the first thing you see. Then the second thing is you're going to train these same athletes mm. okay? He has just come into camp. There are these mm. athletes who have been in camp mm. but within a month he, he, he is way up there compared to these ones who have yeah, been here they, doing this program yeah. for a very long time. Those are some of the ways you can tell, okay, this person is natural. Mm. It comes naturally. You know, like some people with math, mm. you'll tell them what is one billion times yeah. times 100, and they'll and just give you the number. Yeah. Me, I have loop a calculator, yeah. and most times my, my calculator yeah. will not even feed in that number. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So they, they, there's also that natural talent in athletics where you, everything comes easy for them. Mm. You tell them, okay, we are doing 10,000 mm. meters, we are doing uh, 400 uh, speed and you just most an athlete when you tell them you're doing 400 let it be a long distance run let it be a sprinter 400 workout is like the killer workout <laughs> yeah. this guy will just run okay continuously yeah, yeah. without getting tired and you're like do you have what? an engine in your <laughs> <laughs> in your system you yeah. don't about so yeah. i think that's what he what, that's what he was meaning mm. naturally talented let's let's go to the math you said chapter gay is a mathematician uh, yeah uh, you know when we, you see when we are training mm. with because most of people they think coaching in athletics is very thing. It's not. <laughs> because that's I said there is a lot of calculation. Oh, yes. If you don't know how to calculate the the race, even if you are fit, even if you have been trained, mm. you cannot achieve. So that's what I was saying for him when he's running, he knows how to There is a way there is a way he starts and uh, actually most of the good brilliant those Ethiopians have watched those uh, Kenyans and all these long good long distance runners and I see this with that. Uh, uh, with a uh, chapter gay, they start. They are always at the start in the first couple of laps. They are around number four, number five. They keep around there. Then, eventually, towards the uh, about the last, I think two and uh, two laps, they start sprinting. You know, I don't get it. Okay. Is that a calculation? Yeah, it is also part of calculation. And then, and, and then you can see. Uh, say if you, if you send four Ugandans, say Chisa, and you know two Ugandans in the same race. You will see at the start, Chisa will be ahead of Cheptege. Then eventually, you see Chisa as if, you know, letting Cheptege, you know, overtake. Even if Chisa is not inside a first setter, you don't get it. Tell me, teach me this math. Tactic. Okay. This tactic. All those tactics see, are done during the preparation. So as you're training, you tell them, this is how you're going to run this race. If you, give an example, if you're going for a race with, say, Cheptege, how do you prepare for the race? What kind of talk, prep talk do you have with the athlete? Okay, when we are training, mm. okay, we have different levels mm. of athletes. Mm. Like you know, Chapter is the man of his own level. Mm. But he's under the same management with so you have mentioned of yeah. uh, But when we are in training, mm. we all those tactics, all those see how we mm. can win, you have talking of Kenyanese, how they start, how they finish, it is done. It's training. all to the script. They're yeah. all running on, on, to the yeah, script. Yeah, we, yes, we like, have even time trials during training. Yeah. To make sure when you are training today, we are doing intervals. Mm. If, for example, we are doing 400 meters, like eight of them, mm. what time should you bring her up when you are doing it? Mm. It's done during training. Mm. So that when you go to the competition, you apply the same. When you transfer training into competition, mm. it becomes easy. Mm. Just really easy. Mm.
if you are a, you are not hard on training, you don't expect much, much yeah. in competition. Yeah, you, you, you are adding on something. I think the, the mathematics is saying is mo what most people actually, what they don't understand, most people say, oh, athletics, just go and run. No, mm -hmm. athletics is a science. One, you need to understand the energy systems involved in athletics. Mm. A long distance runner, the energy system they need is purely mostly aerobic, but they need the anaerobic energy system as well. Mm. Okay? Mm. Me, a sprinter, I need anaerobic. 90% of the time, mm. okay? Now, the, these guys, in training, they have to work on those body systems. So mm. you say, like, you see keep, uh, these guys maybe behind when they are starting. Mm. At the start of the race, they are mostly building up their aerobic uh, capacity. Mm. And they have trained at such high levels that they know that if, for example, the first three laps, I go at 67 67 seconds per 400, mm. okay? I have the energy to be able to pick up later to finish much faster. Mm. Now, when you see like Kisa going in ahead, that's a tactic. How? It's also like a burnout tactic. That's why like when we have one athlete in the race, you find the athlete is complaining that I needed a training partner there. Because what happens mm. is, for example, you know that, okay, this Kenyan is the one we are targeting. Mm. Or like, let's say we are targeting Brega, the Ethiopian. Mm. Okay? Mm. So what you, what you will do, you will sacrifice Kisa. It will have already been agreed that Kisa is going to be the sacrifice. Okay? Mm. If he, he will go and run a very hard pace, mm. and of course what's going to happen is if, if Kisa is like 10 meters ahead, these guys are not going to stay behind. Mm. What if he stays there forever? forever yeah. You understand? Yeah. It, it's, uh, athletics is also very psychological. Okay, mm. it's a it's a psychological game as mm. well. Like whoever has their psychology right, and you don't fall for it, you survive. Mm. But most of the times, because it's a competition, you're under so much pressure. The whole world, the whole, your whole country yeah. is on you, mm. unless you have had super massive preparations. That's why you need to respect Joshua. Mentally, he is very, very, very strong, and he knows what he wants, how he wants it when he wants it. Uh, uh, let, let's go back to Kiplimo. You know, I bring this because you don't, it's not often that we get a chance mm. to have experts in athletics uh, to, get, to get some of this information, you know, but uh, let's go back to, uh, to uh, Jacob Kiplimo. In 2017 here uh, at uh, Kololo, he, he was the, you know, he won the junior, uh, you know, race uh, in the IWF World Coast Country Championships. Uh, the same year, Cheptegei had a forgettable uh, race, you know, just when he was, you know, on the home straight. Uh, he lost it. We didn't get it up to now. Of course, we had uh, uh, Rafael Kasaija here trying to explain the science of what happened, but probably that was God setting him up for what he's achieved today. Yes, uh, that's what I keep, I keep telling people. But this young boy, Kiplimo, I think was probably 16 when he first, uh, he actually made a record as the youngest Ugandan Olympian. Uh, should have been 2016, was Rio. it? Yeah, was, Rio yes. It was 16 when he went for Olympics. Yes, uh, we went youngest, for the Rio Olympics. Olympics yeah. Rio Olympics. It seems, it seems his, 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 his abilities are beyond his age. Because I've heard stories, I've, I was not there, of how he actually gave, uh, he has beaten Cheptegei twice in Tororo, I think. Yeah, the National, National Cross Country. the National Cross Country Championships. So this boy is, say, would he say he's the a Lionel Messi of, uh, of athletics of sorts? Because he's, even at a young age, Messi was humbling, you know, older guys. This boy is that special. But I mean, like, athletics is... An individual event mm. like he said um, we are all different and um, he's, he's, he's special like you said mm. everyone comes in their era and they're special Kiplimo is not going to be like Joshua mm. and he will not be like Kipsiro he will not be like you know like all the other long-distance mm. legends mm. who have set this pace for them each one of them comes with their own thing so Kiplimo has come with the element of he is young he's one of the youngest Olympians um, he's very talented, and that is his, his legacy mm. that he's created. Now, whether he will emulate, suppress mm. what Joshua has achieved, mm. that is yet to be seen. Mm. We cannot... But in terms of potential... Well, potential has... alone doesn't count in athletics. In athletics, your talent matters. Luck mm. needs to be on mm. your side, especially like, you know, with the long distance. You can just be unlucky and they creep you out of the track. Yeah. Or they can push you, you can fall. You know, you need luck, mm. okay? You need mental strength and you need good conditions, mm. okay? Because you might have all these others, but then on that day, it rains. 
Mm. And then the, the, the conditions are not favorable for you, so you're not able to produce what mm. you're capable of. Mm. So we shall wait to see mm. what happens because as we, there might be injuries. Mm. You know? and yeah, and so you, we, 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 and, and also <coughs> the other thing that we shouldn't do as Uganda mm. is one, we shouldn't pit these guys against, against each, each other. other. That, oh, mm. you are going to break uh, his record. What mm. he has done is amazing, mm. coming back and running a PB, that yeah. is amazing. Almost the same thing that Joshua, Joshua did mm. Mm. when he was out uh, after mm. the Commonwealth Games, yeah. when he had that knee injury, mm. he came back and won the Diamond League. Mm. Okay? Mm. So it shows you that these two athletes are very special in their own mm. yeah. accord. Mm. Now, as Uganda, what can we do? <coughs> we need to ask ourselves, we are experiencing something we've never done before. Mm. We are having a possibility of having a one-two in the Olympics in the 10,000 and 5,000. That is something that has never happened in Uganda. We need to embrace that yes. and not say, oh, Joshua is going to win it, or mm. so and so no, has to win don't it. Don't create a sort don't of competition between an, the two. Yes. No. We and need by the way, just embrace it as, as a, a disclaimer, nation. this show is not to create a competition between okay. the two. We are here to show you that these are two of our most special athletes one slightly younger than the other. We're just trying to understand what is making them special. And we're going to take a short break. But before we do, uh, take a, uh, when we do return from the break, we need to understand perhaps uh, their management. Because I'm not so sure of how many athletes have these you know, European managers and coaches. But I do know that Chiplimo has Italian managers and coaches, while Cheptegei has Dutch managers, I think, and coaches as well, could they have a special contribution to their, you know, success? And can we learn something from them? That and more after this short break. You're still watching NBS The Score. We are powered by DSTV. I have Mildred Gamba. Uh, she is a national team sprinter and coach, uh, also a club founder, an athletics uh, uh, club founder, and Gordon Ahimbi Siwe, who is the national team long distance coach. I am Web Daniel Sebachi J. Don't you move a muscle. We'll be back in a jiffy. The Score. Brought to you by... Live Sport is back. Stay connected to DSTV to watch it. John loves football on Go TV, so he traded being a best man for being a best fan. Miriam stood her date up just for this matchup. Albert and his family had plans, but they couldn't miss this, and neither can you. Because this new football season, this is football worth watching. Get a Go TV decoder and one month of Go TV Max for only 89,000 shillings to get all the football action. Go TV. Live it, love it. Owning a home is out of reach for most Ugandans today. For many, owning a home can only ever become a reality where they inherit it, mobilize savings over time to build for themselves, or build up enough income and savings to borrow for or pay to buy that home. What if the design and finishes of a home could help reduce its cost, making it more affordable? What if there was technology that could help reduce the cost of building and shortening the construction period, saving both time and money? What if using modern ways of building could attract better financing to help you afford a home today? Join local and international real estate experts from government and the industry as we unpack these questions and more in the second edition of the NBS Housing Baraza, happening this September on the 17th and 18th. Email info at nbshousingbaraza.ug or visit www.nbshousingbaraza.ug. Powered by Housing Finance Bank, National Housing, Plascorn, Soliton Telmec, and NBS Always. The youngest ruling monarch in the world, King Oyonyimba Kabambaiguru Rukidi IV, has been at the forefront of health promotion and care in his kingdom, mainly promoting HIV prevention as the UN Goodwill Ambassador for HIV and AIDS, and is also actively championing the development of the region as the tourism epicenter of Uganda. Ito wa MTN, nomhimbo muingi ni titabalucha, ruke wa saijo mkama wa atoro, Dr. Oyo, nyimba, kabamba iguru, rukidi, o wakana. Hakiro kie ekiempango, ya vili neitano, 
همون میانده یونا. I would like to congratulate His Royal Highness the Omukama of Toru. Rukira Basaja Oyo Nimba Kabamba Iguru Rukidi on his 25th coronation anniversary. We offer our good wishes to you and the people of Toro. Hangiriza entirely ya Toro. The Morning Zoo on Next Radio is all fresh and brand new. This is the number one morning show in the city. With Marcus. And now, with the one and only Queen of Radio, character Scary Simbi, a.k.a. Nalongo. Catch that first bite in news, music, sports, motivation, and laugh out loud moments. What? What? On The Morning Zoo. Oh. Weekdays from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. The Morning Zoo with Muckers and characters. And not even slowing down. Only on 106.1. Next Radio. Big Hits. The Score. Brought to you by. Live sport is back. Stay connected to DSTV to watch it. You're still watching NBS The Score. Welcome back. I am Web Zalo Osoba Chike. We are powered by DSTV, the home of live sport. And speaking of live sport, it is back. The English Premier League started yesterday with that big game between crossroads rivals uh, Arsenal uh, playing against Fulham in London and Scott Parker's uh, Fulham were obliterated at their own turf, the Craven Cottage, as they were beaten by three goals to nothing. Uh, it's a new season, but the same old Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, but also the talking point of that game was William Borges da, uh, da Silva, uh, who was able to uh, you know, assist thrice on his debut. It, it, it means probably uh, Chelsea, with all their signings, they might want to be uh, worried about the man they let go uh, of to join their uh, rivals. Or, uh, you know, uh, uh, London rivals, that is uh, Arsenal. But that's not the topic tonight. We are discussing uh, how good Jacob Kiplimo is, the young man uh, who ran a personal best and also set a meet record as he won that was in uh, Czech Republic. Uh, this week he won the Golden uh, Spike uh, event in Ostrava in Czech Republic with a time of 12, 48, 60, uh, 63. Yeah, that was his time, breaking a record that had been there since 2003, set by a Kenyan uh, Cherong there. But uh, uh, just to tell you about this young man, he was born in uh, uh, the year 2000. Uh, he's a man uh, from Sebe region, but grew up in Bukwo, is it? And that is where, of course, uh, they nurtured his talent. Uh, he specializes in 5,000 meters and 1,000 meters, and 10,000 meters, rather. And he is uh, managed by Italians, uh, his Italian manager, Federico Rossa, and the coach, Giuseppe Gambron, uh, the guys who should partly credit uh, for the magic we are seeing in this young man, he, his medal cabinet is just 19, I'm reminding you, uh, but uh, he has, he's the 2016 World Junior 10,000 meter bronze, bronze medalist. I remember he won that in uh, Poland, I think it was in Poland uh, in 2016. Then the 2017 World Cross Country uh, Junior Men's 8 kilometer gold uh, medal champion, uh, champion that was here in Uganda in Kampala. He's the one World Junior 10,000 meter uh, silver medalist, and in 2019, he won the World Cross Country Senior Men's 10 kilometer race. That is the man we are discussing. Should I say the boy? He's just 19. The boy. We are discussing Jacob Kiplimo. Back to you, coach. Uh, quickly, in athletics, it is so difficult, in any sport, any contact sport, it is so difficult to manage injuries, yet they are common. You can't avoid them. But there is something uh, special about Cheptege and Jacob Kiplimo, and I want to understand how big a role the management of these two you know, guys played in managing their injuries to the level that they came back and still competed at the global level and up to now are winning medals for Uganda. Yeah, you see now, sports is business. True. Because management, it will, when they win, it is money. Yeah. So that's why management has put a lot of money in the case. You see, mm. so even it was Joshua who, got, who was injured first. first yeah. But the management had to come in, mm. was taken to the Netherlands, was treated because, you know, Europe, yeah, they, they are not like us. Yeah. They have everything. That's why they have managed to treat those injuries. Yeah. 
uh, for those two athletes mm. to be on track as soon as possible. Mm. But if it was not of that uh, foreigner management, maybe mm. Mm. they wouldn't be still running. What can we learn from these guys, uh, Mildred? How, what can we learn from these European, uh, this European management they, they, these two boys have? Because obviously they are doing a couple of things right for them to, to help these young men, because these are young men probably getting a lot of money, and we do know how money disorganizes young people. If you're not well managed, you will, money will put you off the focus. But Sheptege will win big money events today. Two months later, he wins another big money event, uh, but goes for a world championship and still competes without being losing, losing focus and concentration because of what is in his account. That's a big, big, big thing. We've seen footballers who aren't even way less but are disorganized because of their paycheck. They just can't play football anymore because they are disorganized uh, by the money. What should we learn from these guys? Um, what we need to learn is the first thing as Uganda, we need to realize that sport is a multi-billion dollar company. Mm. And it is one of the best, best sectors to have our youth. Instead of most of our youth running to politics, we need to channel them to sport. Because one of the things that sport teaches you, the first thing is internal discipline. Mm. Athletics, a lot of people run away from athletics because athletics is brutal. You mm. suffer alone. Mm. You run that race alone, okay? So if you don't have the discipline as yourself when it's raining and the coach has said you have to do this workout and to complete that workout, you are not going to succeed. If you go and do a mediocre workout because you feel that I've told you, you're never going to succeed. So one, sport teaches you the internal discipline. What can we, what can we learn? Take sport as a business. What does that mean? Most, if you see a lot of the businessmen who are successful, even if they're earning more and more money, let's look at Sudir. A lot of people, Sudir is still putting up buildings and buildings and buildings, regardless of the money he has. The hunger is still there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is the same thing we need to, to realize. It is my career. You, this is your job. Just because you've had a successful interview and yeah. you've gotten money doesn't mean you can't sleep and, and give sure. up. You look for the next big interview. And that is the same thing with sport. These guys, they know it is their life. Mm. Okay? That is where the, the, their families are earning from. But not only their families. Look at the team around them. They need a physiotherapist. They need a coach. They need a, a strength coach. Mm. Okay? They need a fitness coach. They need a flexibility coach. Do you see all these jobs they're creating? Mm. Okay? So they are So success. you mean Cheptege you alone has all those yes. around him? Yes. You That's must have all those. Cheptege is a company of sorts. Exactly. <laughs> like as an athlete, you are, an, you, 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 you are a business. You yeah. yourself, you are a business. You have a team. You need to, like this, there's a social media. Yeah, you yeah. need to have a social a media, someone team. managing your publicity. Okay? A dietitian. Uh, exactly. You, you know need what a you dietitian. Eat. You need, so basically, it, you, you as a person, you're a product. Yeah. And you're being sold. And so, and so many people are surviving on you, on your exactly. talents. Exactly. So, so if, 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 if when Kiplomo was injured, and he is a young man, he's what, 19, at that time he was 18. If I am his business manager, I'm like, wait, my multi-billion dollar yeah, deal is going down the drain. I have to do everything in my power to get this back. Now, what can we learn as Uganda? One, we need to help improve our healthcare system. I'm not talking of the government, but I am talking of our sports uh, governing body. What is there? Okay, we have excellent doctors in Uganda. Mm. But a lot of the doctors are not even encouraged to study sports. Why? Because sports is looked at as a leisure uh, activity. Uh, from the top, okay? leisure economy. So the, 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 our biggest problem is from the top. We need to realize, I mean like thank God we now have things like COSU, but mm. still it is not good enough. Mm. Okay, we, we need more. 10 COSU. Okay, yeah. we need special hospitals which are just for athletes to treat their injuries and be able to get them back into competition mm. at the level where they were. Now, to throw just more light on that to a footballers, because uh, probably you don't follow so much of Ugandan footballers, but uh, what you say is there, and the example of Cheptege and Kiplimo uh, should uh, be a good example to footballers. We know of so many young footballers who go out, out of Uganda, play professional football, sign big money contracts, get injured with their clubs, they are sent back here to, to rest, but just because they feel, you know, okay, they will start, because they don't have personal managers and people to, to, to advise them, there will be, you know how football and talent is, you, you said it yourself, Kiplima wanted to be back on the track, yet you, can, you, people, you guys were saying, you're not ready. 
but he wanted as an athlete. Because sport naturally, you have that urge. When you say ball, even if you're injured, you want to go and kick the ball. But if you don't have the discipline to control it, you will just worsen your injury. So we've seen players who have lost contracts with their clubs because they were sent here to rest. But they went and started playing village football and actually aggravated the injuries and the clubs terminated their contracts. So again, a big point. But uh, uh, le le let's uh, quickly uh, talk, talk about... Uh, uh, earlier on, I was talking about uh, Jacob Kiprimo, uh, th this young man, he runs 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters. But I'm told that uh, he, in as much as he's good at both, uh, he's, he's better in, I think, 5,000 meters? Kiprimo, uh, I'm told? Yeah, you see, now Kiprimo, he's still young. Mm. That's why he said you cannot compare him with Joshua. Mm. Because he doesn't need, because like Joshua now he can run half marathon. Mm. Is a, at, at his age, is around, but mm. Chiprimo is not around mm. because he's still young. He's still, you know, in mm. middle and long distance, you go mm. gradually. But, yeah. That's why at his age, even if he's so good, he can't skip to certain levels. Yeah. And uh, as my colleague said, mm. self discipline. Mm. If he does not listen to a coach, mm. he cannot go far. That's why that is the work of the coach to mm. advise. He can run both, mm. both events, mm. but what is his favorite event? Mm. Mm. At his age, he can still perform better in five seven. Mm. But he can run even a ten. Yeah. But at his age, he needs to be controlled. Mm. If he's not controlled, then we, he will not, we shall not achieve a lot from him. Uh, let, 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 me, uh, let me put this to the sprinter first. Uh, the comparison between, I, I was talking to Dokas in Jikura, and she was trying to, to help me understand the difference between the conditions through which a long distance runner should be trained and a sprinter. And I was also asking, and I'll put this to you again, why is it that your sprinters are usually more, slightly more muscular than long distance runners? Long distance runners are usually, like if you look at Chepte, uh, Chepte Gay or uh, Kip, uh, Kiproitich, these are guys I think I can just blow, you know, <laughs> Uh, winter yeah, and they fall. You know, what's, what's the science? You tell us the science. Say it's, it goes back to science. your body type. Yes. I'm going to speak, speak a bit of science. Okay, yes, close. please. So we have three body types, okay? Yeah. So you have the endomorph, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> By the way, you I did have, PCB mass at, you have uh, the mass at level, so. This one they didn't But push. again, you're confusing me. I didn't uh, get that. You have the endomorph, the ectomorph, the mesomorph, okay? Yeah. So I'll break it down for you, okay? Mm. So the endomorph, endo, mm. they are, you know, the short put. Uh, the short, those huge ones, eh? mm. naturally, no matter what they do, they naturally have a bigger percentage of body fat because your body is composed of, of fat, mm. muscle, bone. bone yeah. Okay? Mm. So the endomorph naturally have a bigger composition of fat in their body. Mm. Okay? Mm. The ecto, okay? you can hear ecto, ecto. they are total. To 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 eh? uh -huh. They are mostly composed of bone. Yeah. Uh, the, the, those are the ones you, the long distance runners, the high jumpers. Yeah. They yeah. tend to be yeah. in that. Yeah. Then you have the meso muscle. Okay? Mm. Naturally, they build more muscle. Have you seen little kids like they already have yeah. cuffs? Yeah. 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 Those sure. are like naturally meso yeah. Okay? Now, each of these body types has a, 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 an event it favors. Mm. The ectomorphs, mm. okay? Because they have leaner muscle, okay? Now, the event of long distance and middle distance running, because you are running over a long period of time, you use oxygen, a lot of oxygen, which is the aerobic. Mm. So you, you need to carry your body weight over a long period of time. Mm. If you have a lot of body mass, mm. okay, in mm. terms of muscle, because muscle is very heavy. Mm. Muscle is way heavier than fat, yeah. okay? Yeah. So you need that, you need that type of body to be able to carry you over a certain period of time. Mm. But you still need a little bit of the muscles to sprint at the end and at the start of the race. Because yes, if you look, yes. like 800, they sprint at the start, oh, yeah. then they settle, then they sprint at the end. Uh, the so you straight. still need, mm. yes. Like when, when, when uh, Kiptege broke that world record, he mm. was literally sprinting. The, so yeah. they, they still need that composition of the anaerobic where yeah. they have to sprint. Mm. Now a sprinter, mm. it's a power event, mm. okay? I need to explode. If mm. like if 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 you if you go and watch a hundred meters yeah. and just listen to the start, it's like mm. pa, pa, pa. Mm. the blocks like you kick those blocks. They get off the blocks. Like with all if the those blocks didn't have 
something. Yeah, the blocks would fly so that way, you would fall yeah. so bad because it's a power event. So you need that muscle to power you. Through a smaller, di a smaller distance. Yes, you, mm. you cover a smaller distance. But, but a lot of in energy. the end, mm. both of you, you will end up using the same amount of energy. Oh. You are expending your energy mm. very fast, fast in a mm. short period of time. They are releasing their energy. Mm. So for you, you go like, <laughs> Mm. For them, they go like mm. in small mm. bits. So, so in terms of the training, uh, the, the training, uh, you know, uh, uh, environment. Training environment. Why, why is it that like the other ones need uh, for high us, altitude? And, okay. You... High altitude means there is little oxygen. If you were, if, if every time I go to Capturra, mm. the first thing is I'm out of breath. Mm. Like I am literally out of breath. Mm. Why? Because naturally there is low oxygen. Mm. Now, if you look at the long and uh, long distance running, mm. okay, one of the best things that they do, the um, the low oxygen concentration mm. forces your body to produce more red blood cells. Mm. Too much science. Yes, that's what I was telling you. The athletic Viewers, uh, I have a, a, a very well resourced person in here. Uh, are you a science lecturer as well? I'm a PE teacher. Yeah. Oh. Um, that's, what, that's something that uh, we. Okay. We have to but let, let's leave the science for a bit before you bore our people and confuse them. Let's get back to the sport uh, part of it and talk to uh, Coach here. Uh, coach, quickly, are there more young uh, talents you see? when you're coaching that you feel Uganda should be ready for in a few years? Because the worry is, right now we have Joshua, uh, Joshua Cheptege and Jacob Kiplimo, and of course in the ladies we have Winnie Nyanyondo and uh, Halima, and now Chisa in, in the guys. But uh, the problem we have, because already people are excited, we, have, we feel like we are getting at the level of Ethiopia and Kenya, <laughs> You know, we feel th this Cheptege has given us that level of confidence and excitement that we can even think we are anywhere, anywhere close to Ethiopia and Kenya. But if that is going to happen, we need more talent and we need to be more consistent in producing talents like Kiplimo and Cheptege. As a coach, wh wherever you pass, wh whatever you know, you see kids, do you feel we have the talent yeah, to, to, to compete with Kenya and Ethiopia? Yes, we yes. have very many. But the, the challenge is. is mm. We are limited by resources. Mm. But if we are supposed to get <coughs> enough support, mm. then you see wonders. That's why you see now those who are performing well, they're in clubs. Mm. Joshua is in Paris. Mm. Uh, Chiprimo was in Arua, now he's in Uwa. Uwa. Mm. Uh, because now they are, when you are sure of something at the end of mm. the month, mm. training will not be hard. Mm. Me as a coach, I'm poor. I will mm. not manage to take a gamba mm. and I say I'm going to train because I don't have resources. Mm. That's the big challenge we have. But talents, we have more than enough. We can compete with Kenya, we can compete with Ethiopia at that level. Mm. But we are limited by resources. Mm. What do we do? If we can get some sponsors to come down to the grassroots, support mm. the in a few years, we shall be very far. The high altitude uh, uh, training facility, the famous one in Captura. You people, I believe, request. Uh, she, she doesn't uh, because she says she says when she goes there, she runs out of breath. Mm -hmm. I'll ask this to you, pose this to you because uh, you're always there. I yeah. believe that high altitude training center. Uh, how excited are you about it? And you know, the longer it takes, does it discourage athletes in any way? I, I understand Cheptege built his. Is it ready? Is it up and running already? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, he has his. Mm. Is it open to other athletes? Yeah, it is well? open because, like, mm. that's where we, 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 some time back we had a problem with the Sebei Quad because of the, being at school, mm. we are training at the track. Oh. That's where we, it is open. So, how much will the high altitude training center change in terms of helping our talent? It will not change much them? because that one. It will not be for everybody to be there all the time. Mm. It is a national facility. It is mm. big. It is not specific only no, no, yeah. or games. Mm. So I think the court is not yet finished, mm. but we think it will be used during national. I mean, mm. during the residential training when mm. there is a big event. Mm. So it will, it will not help much. So, so we need more like the Cheptegei one, exactly. where people can at any time kids can go there and feel. Uh -huh. well. I think but what we also need is um, countrywide. Like, you know, in the capture, mm. We have one or two. We have that one of Cheptege. Mm. It's a day Sebei college. College. There is for a district, but uh, it, is on, it is on a sort of state. Mm. But yeah. uh, is, it, is it so expensive? Let me understand. Mm? These facilities, athletics, unlike 
a football stadium that uh, you know you need funds, you need so you need stands and what and artificial uh, grass. From where I see it, I'm thinking for a, an athletics uh, long distance training facility, all you need is space and uh, and uh, I don't think it's so expensive to make. That is from my understanding. I don't. Think, it doesn't seem to be so expensive to have one. All you need is let's say a dressing room, maybe uh, a resting area, then land and space where people can run. I mean, that is true, but then if you look at like what currently, um, there's a lot of sport facilities are under attack. They, our, our, our country, unfortunately, we still don't recognize the value of sport. sport. Mm. A lot of our facilities are being taken, and you find, look at Lugogo. Yeah. Shopping mall, okay? Yeah. Nambole is under threat. Exactly, <laughs> Nambole is under threat. And then, like, actually, I, I can never forget <coughs> um, 2012, mm. the Olympics. Okay? Mm. Our national trial, our national championship had to be moved to Makerere University because there was a pastor at Nambole. Now, can you imagine? many athletes, I could probably say I was denied a chance at the Olympics. I, could, I can argue like yeah. that, even if I, 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 I was not going to qualify yeah. for those yeah. Olympics. You'll be justified. I, I have a right to, to yeah. what? To say that. Because one, uh, Makerere University, the track is not a standard track. Okay, yeah. the, the running conditions are not favorable. Mm. So, our facilities, yes, athletics, all you need actually is a track, but on that track, it needs to be a properly managed track without a lot of potholes, mm. you know, like smooth. Then, of course, with that, you will need like a gym. Yeah. Because as, as athletes, whether long distance, middle yeah. distance, sprinters, well, which still I, I think wait. shouldn't be ex exactly. very expensive for government. Expensive. You can just but put so it, many everywhere. Yes, it goes back to my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are a leisure Equ facility. Equ we yeah. are not a business. Because if we were a business, all these things. I mean, like in every district, we, we run um, a program called Sports uh, Empowering Girls Through Sport. Mm. And basically, what we do is we go to different districts, select school girls, like 100 of them. You should see the amount of talent that comes mm. out, like the natural talent we were talking about. Mm. But then, like, you, you don't have the capacity to contain all of them. And you can't, we can't, we need to stop ferrying people from their villages to Kampala. Uh, yeah. Because 80% is a fail. Why? Yeah. Because you have plucked them from the environment they're used to. Yeah. You bring them to Kampala, they're exposed to all these things they were not exposed to. Mm. There's no one to help them with the discipline. They go east. Yeah. Okay? But then if we had these facilities everywhere, and mm. then I think, now for me, this is where government needs to come in. We need to start paying coaches as we pay teachers. Get mm. those coaches on a payroll. Okay? Because if you were, I mean, teachers are being paid like 200,000, 300,000, but they will teach diligently. If I, as a coach, okay, you are paying me that little money. We have very many trained coaches, but they have to do other things. Mm. If in every, if all are, every, every district, they have like a truck, they have their gym there, they have coaches who are on a payroll. Let's come back here in 10 years well, and, have nice this, and have this question, and have that's, this debate again that, of like, is Uganda talented? That's a nice one. Let, let, let's talk about something again that keeps confusing so many people, me inclusive. Pace setters, the role of pace setters in athletics. I, talk, I spoke about Eliud Chip, uh, Chipchoge, how he had, I think, 15 pace setters. Uh, then uh, uh, Joshua Chiptege, I think, had three pace setters when he was you know, uh, you know, setting uh, that world record recently. How do pace setters work? And what, how does a pace setter help an athlete perform? Because it's not like you're pulling me. It's not like you're, it's like football where you have, if you have Lionel Messi, you know, he will give you a nice pass and you score, so if you're a striker. But then pace setters seem to be so important in athletics. Yeah, How do they work? It's a tactic also, because... Like Break it down. Help me, help me, a layman, understand the pace setting tactic, really. Because sometimes, yeah, I'm saying it is a tactic. Mm. We, are, we shall be now three, three mm. of us in the race. Mm. But I've been winning, mm. and all the eyes will be on me. Mm. Now, what do we do? Mm. We shall leave this and to be the what? To be a target. target. We, sac we sacrifice you. Mm. you. say you make sure you go and you can run where the fence is the high fence, which will bind this up and it will be one. Then, obviously, I will oh, come. Oh, so pace setters are to sort of ban yes. 
So you run kind so of, but also, I mean, you said you, you're sure Leon Messi will pass you a good pass. If mm. Messi is alone, who is he going to pass to? So uh, with athletics, even like it's been one of the reasons why he has become important. Many times, if you if you listen critical, if you listen cr critically to Kichaptegei when he was running, when the pace setters dropped <coughs> out, the commentators kept saying, "Can he keep the pace?" Yes. Because you know when you're running alone, you're running against the clock. You don't have something to pull you. To pull you. The pace setters help to pull you. Okay, so you, you you may have the strength and the energy to run, mm -hmm. but you may think you're running very very fast. Mm -hmm. So these pace setters, what they do, they take you through the first half of the race at the pace you want. So for example, if you want to run 65. Mm. And and you, you must be your training mate. You know, mm. come from nowhere. You yeah, of course person. you have to. Have yeah, so even those foreign training guys training. that he had as best setters, yeah. were his training, training, training partners. Training mate, you, you do it. You are used with it from mm. training. Mm. Or, or if not, they'll be from the same management, Manage. so they will know that this person management. can do the mm. pace. So basically, it's just to to, to, to motivate you. Mm. They are motivators. They keep so, pulling you uh, to, to be able to keep producing that time that you want. But then when you look at like the big competitions, pace setters, pace setters are not allowed. Mm. Like the Olympics and World Championships, because mm. everyone is now representing their country. Mm. So pace setters are not allowed. Everyone is going to win the race. So uh, uh, pace setters, there are, are athletes who are better pace setters than actually competitors. Is that, yes. is that true? Because they don't run the whole race. I mean like, okay. If, 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 if you take an example of, of like uh, 400, I mean 800 meters, right? That is two laps of almost sprinting. Mm. But then you will have people who are good at 400, okay? Mm. Or good at 600 meters, mm. almost a quarter way through the mm. race. So you will get them to run that part of the race. Because then after that, they, they lose it. They can't run any faster. So basically, yes, they will be good for the 400 meters or for the 1,500, depending on the distance. And they will be able to push you almost at a very good, a high pace. So when, you go, when you're going into a race, are these pace setters recognized as, registered as pace setters? Or yes. I can reach the track and change. No. I'm like, uh, uh, no. I can beat these guys. You go for the, for, for the gold. Go for, no, <laughs> for the kill. No, they're just at, as pace setters. Yeah. But sometimes, if you want, you when he's in the race and you see the one you are pace setting is not moving, mm. you run and win the win. Because it happened to Izukuro. Some years back, mm. so space setting was the center from uh, Australia, from I don't remember, mm. I can't remember. Now, the one she was helping was not. Was not the, uh, she won, she continued and won the race. And she was recognized as a winner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they changed that rule though, because yeah. if you look like uh, on the start and list, if you are doing yeah. the, the pace the setter, pace. they put someone running. Yeah. On, the, on their thing. Yeah. So basically, um, you can finish the race and get your time, yeah. but because you have been recognized yeah. as a pace setter, they will yeah. not give you that prize money. Oh. They will recognize your time because oh. you're already yeah. paid to be a pace setter anyway. Yeah. Mm. But the rule is, as a pace setter, really, afterwards you should drop out because psychologically, remember athletics also psychological. Mm. Okay? So psychologically, if they have employed you to be a pace setter, these people know at some point you're going to drop off. Mm. So if you continue, you might affect their race, mm. and probably you might lose chances of being called again as a pace setter because you didn't stick to, the, to your contract. Quickly, uh, because our time is fast spent, uh, how has COVID affected our Ugandan athletes, and how can they, is there any help you think is needed down there? Because COVID has affected everyone, COVID-19, and uh, talent, unlikely in Uganda, most talented people are, are not really doing well in terms of money, finances. So how do you think athletes are suffering down there and how can they be helped? Yeah, there is a lot of suffering because for this place I'm based in Kapchorba, mm. these athletes. Mm. The way we train is not the same because we are limited. Even if we are going to, because right now we use the Sebei College track, mm. Mm. they cannot allow you when you are more than 10 to go and train from <coughs> there mm. because of that rule. So it has affected us a lot. So how can you be helped? Because we rifle, we need rifle. <laughs> we cannot say okay. government should release the, rifle because yeah, we need yeah, rifles. So yeah, because true. this sickness is not a job. Mm. But we use our initiative to make sure mm. today, uh, today you train this group in that. Then we divide ourselves because now mm -hmm. the way we have been training, now we divide. We are, we are many coaches because okay. now we are some, we are many coaches in Kapsha. Okay, because of time, I'm going to be so fast. Uh, Kiplimo has uh, ha won in, uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, Cheptege, you know, one in, in France, in Monaco. What next? What other events are these athletes looking up for? What is the next 
the season uh, is done. Official. There is only one more race, I think. Uh, As, uh, by next month, we have a World Half Marathon. Yeah. And we expect the chef to get to take uh, part of it, to be one of the participants. Then, if, we, if the government... Then after that, they start focusing on the Olympics. Because we are moving, like the track season is getting officially yeah. done. Because yeah. I think yeah. on after Sunday, there is one more race. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Where is the money? And uh, there was this notion, and I, mean, I know my time is spent, but it's important. There was a notion that Ugandan athletes don't know how to perform well in big money marathons, big money events. Yeah, but you see, the Are thing we is, changing that? Ugandans, we just know how to talk. The only thing we do is talk, this one doesn't do this, this one mm. doesn't do this. Like, for example, Winnie and Alima, they have not performed well. Everyone is mm. talking, oh, they're now wasted. But we do not even realize the amount of time and investment needed mm. for Joshua or for Halima or anyone to win that. All we know how to do is to celebrate and, success. And, and we do not know how to support our athletes when mm. they're not performing well. And that's one thing we must learn. Yes, you're not performing well in the big money marathon. What have you done for us as a country to be able to perform well? Nothing. Mm, to demand results. Okay? Demand results, invest in us, and then demand the results. If you have not invested in us, you do not have a right to demand anything from us. We are doing it for ourselves and for our families. Okay? So as long as we keep doing sport in that way, we are going to have drops mm. of the Keptegeis and the Kipsirov, then we have nothing mm. like that. Do you think it is right for us to even start comparing ourselves to Ethiopia, Kenya? We should not even try to compare that ourselves discussion to any not... of them. Because <laughs> those guys, they have invested. For us, we have done nothing. Thank you, thank you so much. Guys, uh, we have not invested in our athletes enough, but I do thank you for investing your time in us and watching us for this entire one hour. Uh, this has been a, an interesting and different discussion. I do believe you've learned a lot. I've remembered some bit of science that I studied years ago, uh, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try, write, try and you know, revise my books again and refresh my mind a bit. Thank you so much, Mildred Gamba, uh, for you. the lessons. And of course, what's the name of your club? Tatan Banner Athletics Club. Where is it? Uh, it's based here in Kampala, mm. and we organize uh, Tatan Banner's Invitational, Kibak mm. Invitational, where we get the top eight athletes in the okay. country to perform, to promote athletics basically. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach uh, Gordon Ahimbisiwe. By the way, I had an OB called Gordon Ahimbisiwe. He was the brightest kid I've studied with in primary school. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you know him, but that was his Maybe name. He's the one. Gordon Ahimbisiwe. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of the show. We are powered by DSTV. They are the home of live